Welcome to Backstage with Becca B with special guest Lila Coogan. Hi everyone, welcome to Backstage with Becca B. On today's episode, she made her Broadway debut in Mary Poppins at the age of 13 and then most recently went on to star as Anya on the national tour of Anastasia. Please welcome Lila Coogan. Thanks for joining me on this. Of course, you're I, welcome. I appreciate it so much. I, I actually watched the Anastasia movie last night, so I was kind uh, of preparing for it. And I was like, oh, it's actually quite similar to the musical. Yes, a little bit. There's some differences, but. Yeah, there's some differences, like the, sup like, I guess, supernatural kind of thing. Like, yes. kind of evil people. The, we don't have our talking bat. <laughs> yeah, there's no talking bat, there's no dog. So, no. <laughs> no. Yes. It, it's, there's a lot of the same songs, though, which doesn't happen yes. in a lot of movies. Yeah. There are a lot of the same songs, for sure. Yes. So, I'll just get right into this. So, my first question is, uh, what was the first theater show you ever saw, and what was the first theater show you were ever in? So, the first show I ever saw was the revival of Sound of Music with Rebecca Luker, who actually would end up playing my mom years later in Mary Poppins, so that's really funny. Um, and I was full-blown obsessed, and I just wanted to, like, my mom said I left the theater. I was about three years old. I left the theater being like, I could do that. Why don't I do that? And my mom was like, girl, you can't do that. And now she's like, I'm eating my crow for sure. <laughs> um, and uh, the first show I was ever in was a local production of this opera called Pirates of Penzance. Um, and I played Edith. So that was my first ever show. Oh, and uh, you made your Broadway debut at a young age. Yes, I made my Broadway debut when I was 13. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's super young. That's about the age that the young, uh, the young Anya and Anastasia's are on tour, yeah? Yeah, they're actually a little bit younger. So they're, <laughs> they're all about like nine or 10 when they started the job. So uh, our Delilah just turned 13. So. I saw that today. Yes, like, today's her birthday. Aw. Um, so when you made your Broadway debut, since you were so young, did you know how big of a deal it was? Or was it just like any other kind of like regional theater show for you? Um, it was, I knew it was a big deal. It was a very special moment for me. It was not, it took, um, I had, had been auditioning for Mary Poppins since it had like come to Broadway basically. And I, re I auditioned for the original cast and they were like, we love you, but I was too short. I looked too small. And they were like, we'd love you to come back um, at some point. And then I came back again and I was in finals and I couldn't make it to the final callback. So obviously if you can't make it to the final callback, you're not going to get cast. And so it was kind of like one of those things where I had been such like a long time coming in a way. Um, so it did feel very much so like a proper Broadway debut, I would say. Like, I didn't, I didn't necessarily not realize how big of a deal it was because I had been working so hard towards it, especially for that specific show. Yeah. Um, but now that I'm an adult, I am looking forward to hopefully making, like, my adult Broadway debut because um, it's definitely, like, a different experience. Um, not to say that it's, I don't know if it'll be as magical as my first Broadway debut, but it definitely will be, like, a little bit Bit different I feel like I don't know it's hard to explain but <laughs> yeah I feel like there's something just like so like wait wow I'm looking out into an audience like full of people as a kid and like yeah and then after the show like signing stuff for people it's like wow I feel so special as like a 13 year old kid yeah I felt very very special and I felt very very lucky and I felt very very loved by my company which made it even more enjoyable so do you have like an idol or inspiration who inspired you to perform an audition for Mary Poppins? Um, in, in terms of Mary Poppins, I was just, I just really wanted to do it. And everyone was like, you would be perfect for it. Um, I was actually in the American Girl Review at the time and they were all, we all were auditioning for it. And, uh, you know, I think it just, I just really loved the show and I just really wanted to be a part of it. Um, and you know, I think being told no and then having to, like, go back and do it again was actually really helpful for me. Uh, it made me, like, realize how much hard work can eventually pay off. Yeah. And, um, 
but yeah, it, I feel like I had a lot of people who had a hand in like per helping me pursue theater. There wouldn't be like one particular person. So, and I saw on your uh, website bio that you auditioned for Annie, and then that kind of led to your audition for uh, Mary Poppins. Yes. So I. I auditioned for Annie, but like a youth theater production of Annie. It was not like the tour thing. My parents were very against touring or anything like that. Um, so I was not allowed to audition for any tours. Um, and at the time when I was auditioning, Annie was simply just touring. There was no Broadway production. There was no stationary production. Um, so I was not allowed to audition for that. But I was auditioning for like the youth production of Annie that um, my friend wanted to audition for. I wasn't even like, I didn't really know what it was. I didn't even know what I was going in for. And then Anya Wallach, who was running the program that I was putting on the production of Annie was the one that was like, you should probably be in theater. You've got a lot of personality. <laughs> and I was like, oh, great. So she's the one who definitely encouraged me to join theater in the first place. Uh, if it weren't for her, I probably wouldn't have come back to do the show, the next show that they did, which was Hansel and Gretel. Um, so yeah. Oh. That's a good story. Yes. Um, Annie started my love for theater as well. So like, <laughs> I, my poor parents had to listen to me dancing and singing to it as a kid. But I honestly <laughs> had never seen Annie until like years later, uh, like as an adult. So it just didn't ever like happen where like I was never in it and I never watched it. So it really took until I was like an adult and I went to go see a production of Annie with a friend that I saw Annie. So just Have really random fact. Have you seen the movies now? No. No? <laughs> no. Oh. No. Well, when no. you eventually see the movies, then I have to ask you, like, which movie is your favorite. But that's a, that's a when you see the movies part. For and sure. That's a huge debate. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so you obviously participated in, like, many shows between your Broadway debut and recently your, the tour of Anastasia which was such a huge role, especially with the fan base. So <laughs> what was your theater experience like between then and what was your favorite show that you did, like reading, workshop, regional theater or school theater? Um, I, so during Mary Poppins, I did like a big show called Pamela's First Musical. And then I kind of took a step, step back from like professional theater because I kind of wanted to just go to high school and like do yeah. high school things and like just be like normal for a little bit. Um, and so like I would audition for things that I was like super interested in, um, but I wouldn't really like, I wasn't really going for anything that I, I didn't see myself doing long term. Um, and it would, so it was very specific roles that I would go for and I didn't really book anything super big in the sense that like I wasn't doing anything that people were coming to see, but I was doing like a ton of readings and workshops, which was a lot of fun. Um, and I actually ended up doing like the, a long, long time ago, like uh, one of the very, very, very first, I believe, if not the first workshop of the Little Dancer where they were simply just like figuring out what it was. Um, and I played Marie actually, which is the role that Tyler oh. Peck took over. And um, that was probably my favorite experience in between Mary Poppins and Anastasia. And that's also how I got to know Lynn and Steven better as an artist. And um, cause when I first met them, I was about 14 at Pamela's first musical. And then that was when I was Marie, when I played Marie, I was about like 16 or 17. So it was like a couple years later. And like, we really, we worked together on the project of Pamela's first musical, but I worked like with them as Little Dancer. It was a different yeah. type of work experience. Um, and then, yeah, I went to college. I went away. I decided to go to Syracuse and I didn't audition at all. I actually called my manager and was like, don't, don't send me on anything. I want to be here for the all four years. I really want to grow and I want to learn. Um, and I had some great teachers there and I learned a lot. Um, I got to do a couple of productions there, which was fun. Like they have a program, the, uh, program where you work with the professional theater there called Syracuse stage. And I was able to be Penny and hairspray there. So that was my first regional credit. And then I graduated and I didn't work for three years. And then I just happened to book Anastasia. So literally you never know what's going to happen. Cause I did not think I would book the lead of a first national with literally no credits outside of college. So. Here but we they are. loved you. So. <laughs> well. <laughs> Obviously. I, well, yeah, I think it just ended up working out. I think it was just the right time and the right place. And it just happened to be like a perfect role. Um, you know, it was just, Sometimes that's just how it works. So I feel very blessed for, for real. 
And did you watch the movie Anastasia as a kid ever or? Okay. Yes, all the time. <laughs> okay, so you knew the you knew the movie like backwards and forwards probably and yes you're like, okay I need to do this role. <laughs> yes, I was very much so like when this becomes a musical, I would like to go to there. <laughs> yeah. So, and what was the audition process like for you for Anastasia? So mine was a little different than some of my friends that went in for the part and some of my fr friends that were in, eventually in the cast because I didn't get called in initially at all uh and I when I went, wanted to be submitted I was trying to get submitted for the standby not the like not the person playing the role because I, I really didn't have any credits and I was like you know I'm not a great dancer I can hold my own but I'm not on point I'm not like a prima and at the time they were trying to figure out if they could find someone who could do point as well as sing Anya for the, the cover and um, I, so my agent was like, I just don't think that they're going to see you and they wouldn't. And that's, you know, that's kind of how the cookie crumbles in theater. There's nothing wrong with that. You kind of just have to accept it sometimes that like, they're not going to see you for a certain role. But I was a little bit like, wow, I really thought like, I'd be great on you, like great standby, but okay. And, um, then I guess I had taken a class like maybe a, a year and a half before they had started auditioning with someone who worked on Anastasia and I had sung an Anastasia song. I sang Journey to the Past for him. And when like he was at something called an ECC, which if you're in theater, you'll learn is like the equity course call. Um, it's where if you are equity, you can go and audition for projects without getting submitted. It's like, it's basically our version of an open call, but specifically for union members. And my friend was actually playing the piano for the auditions and Stephen Malone, who was the guy I took the class with, was there. And at, at the end of the day, he held up my headshot and he said, you know, I haven't seen this girl at the ECC and I didn't see her at any of the auditions. I wonder why she hasn't come in. And my friend who's playing the keys was like, oh, that's my friend. Like, I don't think she got an appointment. And he's like, oh, we need to fix that. So I got brought in pretty much at the very, 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 very end of what was like the pre-screens to see Darko, Lynn, and Steven. So I skipped like a ton of rounds just because it, at that point it had already happened and they weren't gonna like start me over from scratch. So I got in and I remember Tom Murray who was the music associate was like, so apparently you're here because of Steven Malone. Like, what do you have? Like, let's go, let's see. And uh, Tom Murray was like, oh yeah, you should definitely be in final callbacks. We're, we're passing you on. Like he was very, very sweet. Um, and so when I got to final callbacks, it was kind of crazy because Steven and Lynn, who I had known for years, didn't know I was coming in. They had no idea that like I had even auditioned for the project. And so they were in shock and like, it was just this crazy thing. And Dark was like, do you guys know each other? Like, did you not know that she was coming in? And they were like, we had no idea. And I was like, it was a whole thing. And it kind of felt like coming home, which for Anya is like a huge deal. So it really helped me tap in. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, so seeing them behind the table made me like feel, remember like exactly why I had done this for so long and um I hadn't really heard me sing or seen me act since I was 16 and at that point I was 24 so it was like completely different person and the rest just clicked and then I met Steven final callbacks we did one and done I just read with him and we just sang the song together and sang in a crowd of thousands together and I, I felt like I remember leaving being like that's it like we definitely got this and then he was like we did not girl <laughs> and that's definitely our relationship <laughs> to the oh T is like I'm like overly optimistic and he he's definitely more realistic than I am um but I was right so <laughs> we did get it you give him a hard time about that about oh, all the time. Well, yeah. he's always like, I remember we left that audition and like we had all, we were only paired with each other. Like a bunch of other people were paired with other Dimitris and like Anya's and they were mixing and matching and they literally just paired Steven and I together. And they're like, okay, bye. And we were like, <laughs> I was like, we killed it. They're, we don't even need to see us with anyone else. And he was like, no girl, we did not. And to this day, he'll be like, remember when I didn't think we booked it? And you were like, no, we totally did. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Yep. Uh, where were you when you found out that you got the role and what was your reaction? I was in my apartment at the time in Queens, which I no longer have anymore. <laughs> um, and I had actually been waiting. So I had found out that someone was offered the swing position for the Anya cover two days prior to finding out that I had gotten the job. So I was kind of like sweating bullets because I was like, oh my God, if they, like, I was like, if someone got the part, they would have told me by now. Like they already told the girl, like, play the swing. Like I was like really stressing out. 
Um, and so I kind of had to take like a moment where it was going to be my first day back at work since like the hullabaloo of final callbacks. And I had worked at Lululemon at the time. And so I was like, I'm just going to take a really long nap before work and I'm going to put my phone down. And if I don't hear from them at this point, like 48 hours later, I am moving on. Like, I just have to move on. Cause I felt like, so like, kind of just like, I don't know what I could have done differently. Like, yeah. um, and I woke up from my nap and I had like three missed calls from my agent and I was like, <laughs> so I like called them back oh, and they were happened. like, they were like, um, are you sitting down? And I was like, I am. And they're like, okay, we have news for you. And I was like, oh God. And they were like, they kind of drew it out to tease me. And they were like, so you, um, you got it. And I was like, wow. Like I was crying. I was crying. They were like, we're so proud of you. Like we always knew it was going to happen. We just didn't know when. And like, because they had stayed with me for three years not working, and that means that, like, they must have really believed in me, because it wasn't like I was doing anything for them, you know, (laughs) um, so I'm very, very thankful for them, like, truly, you know, they stuck with me through everything, and I just, like, I just remember my agent, specifically Mikey, was just, like, girl, like, and I was, like, so I I got the standby, they've changed their mind, and they're, like, no, 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 you're playing the part, girl, like, you, you just, you, you did it, and I was, so I cried a lot. I called my mom, I called my dad. Um, I wasn't allowed to tell anyone else. So I could tell like my mom and my dad. Uh, and that was really hard to like not tell my brothers yeah. or like, my best friends for six months. But um, it was great. It was really great. And whenever someone would ask me like, have you heard yet? I'd be like, not yet, but I feel really good about it because I don't like to lie. So I was like, I was like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be like, no, I didn't get it. I'm going to be like, I didn't hear yet but I feel really good about it so that if I got it it wasn't like I was like acting so sad for myself so yeah that was that was definitely a wild six months very stressful not being able to tell people but also very 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 exciting especially like exciting news you want to share with everyone so no matter what the news is yeah it was definitely hard to keep sealed but yeah (laughs) and uh did you get like any advice with from uh, Christy before going out on the road as Anya? Yeah, so we spent like a lot of time together. Like we spent like basically like four full days together. Not just me, but also her, uh, Hannah, Judith, like the four Anyas, the four originals. Um, so we spent like a full like four day weekend together and she was just giving all of us lots of advice, mostly about just like managing doing the show, less about like the character and stuff, because I think she really wanted us to make sure that like we felt like we were doing our own thing and she didn't want to like, you know, just like I would feel the same way. And so she gave me a lot of advice though about like touring and like, you know, taking care of my body and like, you know, she was like, you got to eat well, you got to exercise. And like, I do that already, but I definitely, when I was on the road, took it a little bit more seriously because when you're on the road and you're changing environments and you're changing beds and all these things, you have to be really, really diligent about your self-care. Um, and she was also like very much so like, you know, if you're feeling tired or whatever, you need to like take a show off. Like you can't just like always push through um which is really really hard for performers not to do and that's actually something right now that's like being discussed with COVID and everything they're like now it's like time for us to realize that the show must go on attitude is like not helping the situation yeah Uh, because that's how germs get spread so (laughs) um but yeah so she was she was great she's a lovely lovely person she's just really like awesome inside and out and so talented so it's been wonderful having her as a friend and I know I asked you this the other week on the mixer thing, but how did you go about making the role your own? Yeah, so to make the role my own, like I told you last week, I um, definitely like tried to avoid watching the Broadway production um, because I had seen it a year, or actually like two years before I had started working on the show and I just I knew like if I saw Christy it would just be so hard not to want to just like do everything she did um and I actually was so sad because I meant to go back and watch it before it closed again and I never got a chance to because I was out on the road um but and it was so funny because I know Christy was like she never really got to see the show until um like pretty much the very very end of Broadway and the tour so it was like she kind of had the same experience where she, you know, didn't really get to see the show. And, um, she, or I 
when we started like character work, I tried to focus a lot on like the text and like what I learned about Anya as a person or like Anastasia as a real person. Um, and that kind of just led to different choices and organic choices that happened. Um, you know, also like my director would see something that I would do differently. And if he didn't like it, he'd be like, hey, I don't like that. Let's go back to what it was. Or he'd be like, oh, I really like that choice. It's so different. Let's work that out and like bring more of that into other parts. So that was like, it really did. It was a team effort between me and Darko. Um, and also Steven is very different from Derek. Uh, so when I was building the character, I had a completely different Dimitri. Like Derek is very like, you know, uh, jockey. And like, uh, that's how I would describe Derek's performance, which was like For so sure. perfect for Dimitri. And then Steven is very like suave, I would say, which is also completely different and totally works. So it was just like, they were both very different energies. And I, I've obviously never, I've never actually met Derek, which is crazy. Um, but I've definitely like, I mean, I've seen, I saw him in the show when I saw the show. Yeah. Uh, so like, I can only say from like what I saw and what I experienced that it felt like very different energies, um, but they both worked so well, but it definitely made my Anya different because you got to work with what you're getting, you know? So yeah. it's so cool how every, I've talked to Lynn and Steven specifically about this and they've said it's so cool how every single Anya and Dimitri that they have had since the beginning has been so different and so unique and there haven't been there hasn't been like one like carbon copy of the other yet like it's just just like they're all doing their own thing uh and that's been really cool to hear like that we all have like kind of this own little unique flair that we bring to the show and i saw you and uh you and jake play it oh. together so <laughs> and knowing you all are both we're both kind of didn't have like the long resumes and he just got out of college, right, at UCLA, right? Uh, yes. That's just crazy. I can't believe how good you all were together on that stage. Oh, thank you. So. And that's, that was so fun, too, is, like, when Jake came in, we had to completely redo the show, kind of, because he was bringing his own, like, I will tell you, Stephen and Jake were completely different energies. So it was, like, going from Stephen to Jake, I had to learn how to, like, make, build my beats around what Jake was giving me, and Jake had to kind of, like, adjust his choices that he had made in the rehearsal room when I would come in and work with him to be, like, you know, so that's, like, kind of, like, even when understudies go on, you have to, like, kind of work with what they're giving you, and, like, there's sometimes where you're, like, listen, I really, I need this for you, like for what we're used to, but then there's times like, wow, I really love that choice. Let's like work on that so that when we do it, it's like really, really solid, you know? Um, Cause all our understudies were very unique too. And we had a lot of Dimitri turnover on the, in the show. So we had like, I've worked with, I think seven different Dimitris at this point. Um, and all of them brought a unique flair to it. And that was really awesome. Something new. And uh, you mentioned that you read the actual like, factual rumored story about Anastasia did yeah did you go like deep into reading that or did you try to avoid going too deep into reading about it because it's kind of like conspiracy theories yeah so so Anastasia didn't survive <laughs> like yeah. just to be very clear I know that there are some people who want to believe she did she did not unfortunately they have found her remains so um I didn't want to like kind of go into like the fantasy side of it so I knew about, I've read a lot about the conspiracy theories because I found find them very interesting um but they're not they're not really what I I just found them interesting as a person they have nothing to do with what I did as, as my character what I really focused on more was like what they actually have documented about Anastasia the princess like because the royal family was well documented in terms of like their personalities and their habits so like she was a dog lover she was kind of mischievous she had like kind of like a a conniving side to her like very playful she scared people like she was also very stubborn and she was very but very empathetic like those were things about her that they knew about her prior to her death so those were things that I would take and try to put into my character because they're actual qualities of the person that I was playing oh I, def I definitely see how you did that because the emotion you put into her like a lot of characters are three-dimensional but Anya specifically is one of those, like, she, there's so many emotions to portray of hers on stage. That she goes through the whole gauntlet. She's, you know, she also has, like, PTSD. So it's, like, that, adding that into, like, all of the other things is wild. Yeah. And um, 
How do you think you're like Anya and how do you think you're different from Anya? I think I'm very, um, at least for my Anya, I think that I'm very like, I can be sassy and I can be a little bit uh, stubborn. And that's something that we definitely have in common. Um, kind of sometimes like to dig my heels in the sand when I feel like something should be a certain way. Um, and then I'm, I actually, I'm an empath. <laughs> so I have issues where like, I, like if I see a friend crying, then I'll start crying and then I'll start crying even more than they were. And it's just this, cause I'm so, uh, I, I feel everything they feel. I'm a Virgo with a Pisces rising, which is a very, um, <laughs> very overly empathetic combination of signs so that's great yeah. um so I feel pain all the time <laughs> um okay, that's fun. <laughs> it's great it's it's really great I actually sometimes I'm like I wish I wouldn't feel so much feelings are great but like yeah, I feel a lot um and I think Anya or Anastasia was also very like overly empathetic and like that's why she doesn't hurt Gleb at the end that's why she's very much so like understanding of people when they're mean to her because she just she can see why they would be mean to her which is yeah Sometimes crazy, but like, yes, like I, that's me that I understand it completely. And then I think we're different in the sense that like, I'm not, um, while I would consider myself very determined, I don't think I'm as like, it's hard. She's, she's very much so like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to get it. Whereas like for me, it takes me a little bit to like, build my confidence up in that way like she kind of is a very like outwardly confident person uh she doesn't like really question herself a lot she kind of just goes and does it and like I'm not that way I'm very much so, like I have to like think it through and like see if this is the right decision and like am I like and that you know that has its pros but it also has its cons like Anya's just not afraid to like grab the bull by the horns and do it and like that is not me <laughs> not me at all so that's kind of how we would be different, I'd say. Yeah, and she thinks so fast about, like, comebacks in both the musical and the movie. I was, because when yeah. watching the movie last night, I was like, oh, wow, she's, she's witty. Yes, yes, and yeah. it's, it's, she's witty, but she's also, like, the fact that she is, like, I'm gonna walk across Russia, and I really don't care, because I know that I'm right, like, I would never, it, it would take, like, years yeah. for me to convince myself to do that whereas like she's like I know that I need to do this so yeah, that's where we differ yes um and the scenery is so perfect on the stage with the uh projection designs or anything can you talk a little about how it's done is that if that's allowed uh, I mean I could tell you that they're great I don't really know how they work <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that there, I know that we had like a bunch of little LED screens that they would bring in from city to city. Um, and I know that our wall was like about three feet taller than Broadway because we didn't have the turntables. So we were able to get them a little bit more height. Other than that, I really don't know much about how it works because it's too complicated for me. <laughs> Not exactly. Um, but I will say that I think that like our projection walls are like the best and Aaron Ryan is like really, really good at what he does and they definitely help move the show physically, which is super awesome. Like, it's a risky choice. It could either take you out of the show or it could bring you more into the show. And with the, the projections in Anastasia, it definitely takes you and brings you into the show more. Than For sure. Anastasia. For sure. Do you have a favorite uh, design? I love the cherry blossoms uh, at the end of Journey of the Past. I think that's everyone's favorite when she's yes. seeing the last note in the... Eiffel Tower comes up and the cherry blossoms are splitting up. Yeah, that's that's the best one. So sure. gorgeous. And speaking of that, the some of the songs are very. You have to have a lot of like breath control. I feel like for the songs, they're very powerful songs. How do you work on breath control and like singing and stamina? So for stamina, the best thing you can do is cardio. So a lot of swimming, a lot of running. Um, I'm not a swimmer. I just like don't love it. So I run. I do like three miles every other day. Um, and that keep, will increase your lung capacity because it'll increase your stamina. Um, and then if I'm not like a voice teacher, so I, I don't want to like, get, I don't want to like say that this is for sure but I know that my voice teacher works on like breath control so like expanding my diaphragm and like really working that muscle um 
So I know that that's like something I use all the time. Um, and if you get into the habit of using it in your lessons or whatever, then when you're singing, you don't really think about it. It just kind of happens. Um, it's kind of it though. Like that's the secret to success in terms of like vocals, like stamina would be like, cardio warming up and, and diaphragm exercises. Like that's how you're gonna keep, like hold out long notes or like be able to sing through phrases without taking a breath and like actually like have support underneath them. Um, so yeah, if you really wanna be a singer, you need to get a voice teacher and you need to start working on the cardio for sure. The consistency with working on. Yes, it's, this is something that you do. I mean, you also have to, it's kind of like vocal health and like, vocal stamina are two different things. So it's also like, you can always be working on your stamina. Sometimes you actually need to give your voice some rest. I think people forget like, yes, working muscles is great, but if you don't give it any time to recover, then your voice is never, you're not gonna be able to get stronger because you're always gonna be working at a deficit. So um, that's why I'm like the queen of like, if my voice feels like it's tired, I take a show off. Like I'm not gonna push through. I am blessed that I don't usually have a lot of vocal fatigue, but um, any time I had vocal fatigue, I was like, I'm out, bye. Like, yeah. I'm not doing the show. Uh, I'm gonna be on vocal rest for the day and I'll, I'll see y'all tomorrow because it's not worth it. You're gonna hurt your voice, you're gonna get notes and no one, no one wants that. You don't wanna have to have surgery. It's definitely normal. I don't want people to think that it's not normal because it's totally normal to get notes. It happens to so many people. But if you wanna to try to avoid it in the first place, the best thing you can do for yourself is to rest. Like, and, and that's not an attitude we're taught to have in theater. So that's why I'm, I actively am trying to be like, hey, I take shows off and it's okay. <laughs> like, it's not a big deal, so. And it gives, and it gives the understudies and standbys a chance to show off what they can do. Absolutely. It's just hard when you, especially when you're playing a role like Anya or like, I would say like Evan Hansen or Evan Hansen, you feel a responsibility to show up and be there all the time, not just for your cast and your company, but also for the people who come to see the show. Cause I would be lying if I said that I miss shows and I'd have people message me and be like, I was so devastated. I wanted to see you. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, but like what you would have seen wouldn't have been as good as what you saw. Trust me. Like, you know, um, and that's just kind of like the show must go on attitude that I think right now we're really trying to, at least I personally am trying to take on and be like, this is actually not healthy and if you're yeah. sick or you're tired, you should take a show off. <laughs> it's okay to be like, I need a day off, so. Did, speaking of understudies and standbys, did you give your uh, understudies or standby any advice on stage when, before they went on? No, I don't, I don't. I don't know if that, that's their moment. And yeah. like, I don't want to like take away from their moment and be like, this is what I would do. And this is like, I definitely wish them luck. I definitely sent them love. And uh, you know, if I, if I had, there was like a couple of shows where I like knew I wasn't going to be there. Like when I did the Philadelphia Day Parade and Beth went on in the Kennedy Center, I knew I wasn't going to be able to, I, I had to yeah. take the show off to get to Philadelphia to do the parade. So I wasn't, I knew I wasn't going to be there ahead of time. So I wrote like a little message on my mirror and uh you know, Taylor is, like, one of my best friends, so, like, whenever she's on, I her and be, like, I love you, like, have fun, and then uh, when uh, Hans made her debut, I was so excited for her, because I was in LA, and I remember I woke up, and I was, like, I just, I was, like, I was so sick, and I was just, like, I can't do the show today, like, I, I'm gonna blow out my voice before San Diego opening, so, I, or not San Diego, Tempe, I don't remember, I had an opening the next Something day, and so I, I, so many cities, and I texted Hans, and I was, like, you're making your debut today, okay, love you, bye, <laughs> Like, and she was like, oh my God. Like, so, you know, that's, it's great to like wish them luck and like send them love. But like, I want them to feel like when they're Anya, it's their Anya. And it's not about what I would do or what like anyone else has done in the past. It's like their moment to shine. So. You want them to make it their own and feel comfortable making it their own. Like, yes, that's like exactly it. what should, what should happen. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember the last, it was the last day and that she made her debut. I was like, yep. oh, this is sweet. And she killed it. I remember she everyone did. was texting me like, Hans is killing it. I had to go in and pack my trunk. 
And I remember being like, Hans, I'm going to be here at this time. Is that going to bother you? I like just have to pack my trunk before I go. And she was like, no, of course not. And like, I got to see her in her costume and I was just so excited for her. She's such a cutie. I adore Hans. So yes. Speaking of costumes, do you have a favorite costume from the show? Yes, it would be the nightgown because it's pink and comfy. <laughs> okay. I like pink too, so. Yeah. Good choice. <laughs> and uh, also a question you answered the other day, but uh, what's your favorite song to sing in the show? I don't even remember what I said the other day. Honestly, it changes. I think right now I'm really missing in a crowd of thousands. I don't know. Is that what I said last time? I, I, yeah, that's what you said last time. Okay. I say, I feel like that's the one that I've been missing a lot lately. Um, cause I like singing with other people, but I also, I will say someone sent me a bootleg of, um, what's it called? Learn to do it. And like, I was like, Oh my God. And I sent it to Ed and I was like, look at this, look at what someone just sent me. And he was like, oh, I miss this. And so now I'm like really missing learn to do it. <laughs> so I mean there's not one song that I didn't enjoy singing so there was not one song where I was like oh okay here we go I was like oh yay this one's got to do it they're all such wonderful songs and I feel like people like talk about uh albums being like having like skips and stuff I don't think it has any skips personally no, I don't have any skips so, so. <laughs> yeah all great songs and uh, when you're performing eight times a week, what do you do on your day off? It depends. So I do like to live life. Yes. <laughs> I can't, I, at the beginning of tour, like kind of lived like, like a nun and I would like never do anything. And I would just like, and it got to the point where I was going a little crazy, like crazy. Uh, cause I was just like, I feel like I never get to do anything. And so I did like kind of actively decide to like loosen up a little bit. Um, so like there were days off that I went to an amusement park and I like screamed my face off on a roller coaster, but then I would stop talking for the rest of the night and the next day, and then I'd be fine for the show. Um, luckily I never like blew out my voice at an amusement park because I'm a roller coaster junkie. So like, that's like always been a worry of mine that I'm going to like, but I also like would try to scream with placement. It's, I'm sure I annoyed everyone on the rides with me, but like, no, nah! like it's fine. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, so, like, I went to, like, Magic Mountain with my friends, into Disney World, so that was always fun. Uh, a typical day off, though, usually in, like, most cities would mean, like, brunch, and then shopping, <laughs> and then, like, dinner. We didn't have a lot of full days yeah. off. They're called Golden Days, and we didn't have a lot of those, because most of the time on our days off, we were traveling to the next city. So... Yeah, that would be like my usual day off routine. Um, and we only have maybe like 20 throughout the year. So it's not even like they were that common. So oh. if that, probably less actually. We probably only had about like 15 golden days total. So a full day off, that would be usually what we do. Um, I will say like Sunday nights was the night that I knew no matter what, I wouldn't be performing Monday. So those were the nights where like we'd have some drinks and we would like go to a bar and like the whole company. Um, so that was fun. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's it. That was a lot of brunches because that's what we can yeah. do when we perform every night. So see, I feel like people aren't aware that you don't get that many days off when you're on a tour or even when you're on Broadway, probably. I mean, well, when LA, you're on Broadway, you're not you traveling. Get day off. Yeah, but when you're on Broadway, you get a day off a week. When you're on tour, you don't get any. So yeah. uh, I will say that's like the one thing about there's so many pros to touring. One of the cons is the, the lack of days off and like the fact that not only are you not having a day off a week, but you're also moving around from time to time. So uh, it really depends on the tour, though. Like there are tours that sit down for like several months like for example Hamilton like, they don't move, they don't move around so they're like you know that's nothing well yeah <laughs> it's a lot of work Hamilton's probably the hardest show I've ever seen I was like wow I could never I could never do this show those dancers are working so hard but I could not like the not having a day off thing is probably the hardest part about touring for sure yeah and it's like you have to if you want to sightsee in any specific city then you have to plan sightseeing before a show yeah, and it has to be, like, daytime sightseeing. Every now and then we would do things, like, after the show. Like, we did in Vegas, we did um, the Neon Museum, and we'd have to go after the show to see it because it's, yeah. it's at night. 
So, but uh, most of the time your activities are earlier in the day, like to get up early to so make sure you have the time to do it and then also have rest time before the show. And yeah, it's definitely a different, different type of lifestyle for sure. For sure. But it's a lifestyle people don't get to experience much. So <laughs> true. Very true. We get to do what we love. That's what, that's what counts. So how many cities did you travel to while you were on tour? I think we hit 48 total. Wow. A lot of cities. A lot of cities. So. Wow. Almost, a, almost as many states as there are in the U.S. So. Yes, wow. exactly. Wow. That's insane. Um, I can't even imagine. Uh, and I know you got a lot of gifts and stuff at stage door after the show from fans. Do you have any uh, most memorable moments after a show with the fan or like any favorite fan art? I mean, every moment was like very like memorable. Like, to, I, I couldn't say like I have a favorite because like it's like picking like my favorite child. <laughs> like, I like I love like every moment at the stage door and every. I mean, I think the first time I realized like what an impact the show had or like what an impact I as a person was having on people was in uh, Appleton, Wisconsin, which was like our fourth or fifth city. And a girl was like, like, it was the first time that someone was like, you are my idol. Like, not like Anastasia, not Anya, but like, she was like, you, like you specifically, like, I love you. I follow you. Like, and that was very much a, like a moment of like, oh my God, like I have a lot of responsibility on my shoulders and I need to take that seriously and be very like open and honest with people. So that like, I don't know, cause that's, I don't want to like not be real with the people that like follow me or watch the show or whatever and that was the first time that it really like hit me how much responsibility I had and like I was like I didn't want to take that lightly so that would probably be like the most memorable just because it was the first encounter like that um and it just made me want to make sure I set my best foot forward going going yeah. onward with the tour so yeah I know that I know the show means so much to people and it's it was so wonderful to see after the show. I have one friend specifically who has seen it more than any other show, so. <laughs> yeah, we have like, there are some really, really, really like great people who love this show and like have stayed in touch with us and like check in on us, which is very, very sweet. And like, I remember my, my best friend, Natalie, I was living with her in LA and my this, this amazing girl Sally like would draw pictures of Natalie's dog because he was on my Instagram all the time um and like you know little things like that like they don't go unnoticed and yeah. uh yeah yeah that's that's cool that's a cool position to be in having people very very humbling for sure yeah um so in the industry how do you prepare for an audition like in normal everyday life when you're going in for a role Oh gosh, I haven't gone in for a role in a long time. <laughs> yeah. um, it's always a little bit different. I usually, I like to try to be as off book as possible if I get material, which like lately I really haven't been bringing in my own material. I've been just doing the material that they've been giving me, which is lovely. I love not having to figure out a song to sing for someone because I'm always like, am I picking the right one? That's my Virgo brain going crazy. That's where I should be more like Anya and just pick what I want to do and just do it you know? Um, yeah, that, there's an example of where I could probably just loosen the reins a bit. Um, but yeah, so usually I spend like as much time as possible prepping the material that they give me or the material that I've chosen. Um, I like to work with, uh, actually Jeremiah again from the company. He, uh, does coachings for people in the industry for auditioning. And so I actually like to work with him a lot to help me like drill my music to make sure like I'm really confident in where I'm placing things and the rhythms and what have you. And um, he'll help me with like acting beats. And like, if I'm like, you know, doing a rhythm wrong cause I'm not the best sight reader cause I'm dyslexic. So sometimes it kind of goes crazy in my brain. So it's really helpful for him to kind of like keep me in check uh so he's great and he's just so wonderful to work with um he's like the most talented person I've ever met I just adore Jeremiah and then if there's any dancing I try to get someone who knows the choreography to teach me ahead of time because I can't dance 
so that's great. Um, uh, so I'm sure like, you're better than me. So <laughs> trust me. Uh, so that's great. <laughs> um, so you know, that, I, basically, I try to do as much preparation as possible so that when I get in the room, I feel like I can just kind of like let everything go and just do yeah. what I do. But I can't, I'm like not the type of girl who can wing it. Like I have to go in prepared. Like I have to be as prepared as possible or I'm like nervous as all heck. Um, yeah, like to be off book. I know I'm not, you're not always, there are times where I've gotten auditions so last minute that it's just not physically possible for me to be off book. Um, and that's okay too. Like I never, I always have the material in my hands just as a security blanket. Um, yeah, I meditate usually the day of, try to eat really healthy, like leading up. And then afterwards I let myself have junk food. Yeah. So like after my Anastasia callbacks, I had a lot of Panera mac and cheese. Um, that's Good it though. Open choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just try to have fun. Honestly, that's like kind of the biggest thing is like, I try to have fun because most auditions don't go your way. So it's usually best to just like be like, I'm going to have fun with this. And not Let's overthink. Eat. Yeah, and that's really hard to do, but, um, but yeah, because they really, like I said, most of them are not going to go your way, so it's kind of just better to be like, let's just have fun, you know, so. Yeah. And you, I mean, right now, I'm, like, dying to go back to auditioning, because I just want to get my hands on material, but. <laughs> what yeah, do you I do? want to come back, obviously, because you perform, so it's like. Yeah. There's something. Fun there's something that's missing in your life right now. Yes, very much so. <laughs> it's like, cool, you can kind of go out to restaurants again right now, but it's, it's not the same as having the place you love open. Yeah, I just think it's, it would be nice for us to just do things, you know, yeah. or just not have anything to do, but that's okay. It'll come back at some point. So. And you have to have a certain amount of self-confidence to not overthink and to just go into auditions and have fun like you said so how do you work on having self-confidence that's where my meditation really comes in um because it, that is confidence is not something that like comes naturally to me i'm not like the most confident person um so that's definitely something that i personally work on i also like i do like a lot of self-affirmation and a lot of like gratitude journals to keep me like in check um and then I kind of just try to treat like the actual audition as just like not an audition, but just like fun. Um, so that it's, there isn't so much pressure on that I'm putting on myself to like get the job or like whatever. And like, obviously at a certain time in your life, like that's a lot easier said than done. Like when you really need money and health insurance, like that can be really hard to like not want to take it like so seriously but like I also feel like when you so desperately want something sometimes that like pushes it away like that actually takes the universe pushes it away so that you realize that like no job and no career is going to make you infinitely happy you have to be happy with yourself which is like definitely what I've been working on this quarantine because I'm like all I got is myself and my puppy and right you know that's great but like that's what I got to work with so just little things like that like working on being really happy with yourself first I really just think like it's going to open doors for you in all parts of your life um and uh, that'll help you with your confidence and whatever but it's it's hard it's you're oh it's I don't believe that there's anyone in this world that is so confident that they don't have to work on that and if they don't have to work on that they're probably on the border of being narcissistic and then that's not good either you know you need to have yeah. some sort of humble pie in you because you're not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to be right. And if you can't take adjustments or if you can't take criticism, no one's going to want to work with you, you know, because um, it's just not enjoyable to be with someone who thinks that they're the next best thing since sliced bread. So it's so finding yeah. the balance for sure. Yes, for sure. <laughs> um, Hard. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, especially if you have people like telling you that you're so good all the time. It's like, okay, I can take that in, but like have to take a step back and like realize that yeah well yeah. the weird thing about our brains though is that they're programmed to hold on to negative things more than they are positive so I actually at the very beginning of tour was really rocked I got sick the second week of tour couldn't perform in Pittsburgh pretty much at all which was 
I was just shocked. I was like, I was like, I'm never going to call out. I'm never going to get sick. And then I went to this coffee place and these girls had this nasty cold and they asked me for hugs and whatever. And I wasn't thinking and I was like, yeah, of course. And I don't regret it, but I'm like, wow, I got so sick. And that's yeah. actually why I started being a little bit more like after I would meet with people, I'd wash my hands and just, yeah. you know, pre COVID, you know what I mean? So, uh, just definitely started taking extra steps and checks to keep my body in, in tune and healthy, but it rocked my confidence and it made me think like, it made me question whether I was capable of doing this because I, it was the second week and I was only down for the count. And I was like, this is, I, this is our second city. This is the second week. And in retrospect, I'm like, I had just finished a month of tech, like a month of rehearsals, traveling. Like it's not crazy to think that I would get super sick yeah. at the end of all of it. And yet here we are. And I remember I was texting my friends and I was like, all these people are saying bad things about me online. And like whatever like they're saying I can't sing they're saying I'm not talented that I can't act like all these things they're like writing reviews about my posture like like comments on not any like professional reviews but like comments online and they're like tagging me in it so I can see it and it's just like which is also I just think that that culture is also super negative like you don't have to like everybody's performance there's been performances that I have not enjoyed and that's totally acceptable but there's actually like no need to like go and drag Offer. people's posture or like the way they look or like say saying things like oh they cast her because she's pretty they didn't cast her because she's talented like okay well I don't think I'm very pretty either so like thank you for like making me feel like crap like you know what I mean like that that stuff is just so unnecessary but it got to me for sure because they're tagging you and you can see it yeah. like you, it's unavoidable and I texted my friends and I, I told them like, oh, I don't know if I think I should call them and say that I shouldn't do this show anymore. Like, obviously like I'm not good enough, like blah, 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 blah. And they were all like, are you crazy? Have you read the other, like the 50 other comments about how good oh, you are? Yeah. They're like, you're literally only focusing on that one negative comment. But so I think people do forget that like our brains are predisposed to literally lashing onto the bad things for protective reasons. It's actually a, a, a defense mechanism. It's to keep us safe. But because of that, it really doesn't matter how many people tell you you're good because you're going to hold on to those, the people, the, the people who don't think you're good and not everyone's going to think you're good. That's, that is just the, the pill you have to swallow. Not everyone is going to think you're good. In fact, there are going to be people who tell you you look like the hunchback of Notre Dame and you're going to be, have to be the person that's like, that is your opinion, but I like myself. And it all goes back to you liking yourself because it doesn't matter if other people love you and it doesn't matter if other people despise you because ultimately you're not going to listen to the people who love you. You're going to listen to the people who despise you. And it, it's not going to like help if you're like, it doesn't matter that they love me. This person hated me. You have to be like, I love myself and that's okay. Like, it's okay if you love me. It's okay if you don't. I like me. And that's a lot of work for a lot of people. I'm, yeah. I have not mastered it by any means, but I will say I feel like I'm in a much better place than I was a year and a half ago when I started the tour. So, well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> you you are fantastic. So re remember that. Thanks for you. <laughs> it's very very sweet of you. Definitely hold on to that one. <laughs> Onto the you're fantastic. Thank you. It's very sweet. Um. What's your dream role currently when, when Broadway comes back, obviously? <laughs> if we're talking like currently on Broadway? Anything. I, okay. If it's anything, it would be Dot in Sunday in the Park with George or Wendell on Spring Awakening um, before I age out of them. Well, I won't age out of Dot anytime soon. I actually need to age into Dot. But uh, I really want to play Wendell before I get yeah. too old. And I'm getting there. So that's sad. <laughs> um, but... You, you still have a couple of years. So. I, yes, I have a couple, but I'm starting to feel too old. So if I feel too old, it's going to be a little bit hard to do, you know? But I would love to play yeah. Vendela. Um, but if we're talking, like, currently on Broadway, I, I actually really want to play Regina George. Oh! Like, that would be, like, so much fun. I know most people are like, girl, you're a caddy. You're Katie. It's fine. I'm like, I know. Like, I'd be happy to play Katie, too. Don't get me wrong. I'd actually be happy to play anyone in that show. But I would really love to play Regina. Like, you want so to play that, someone that's different from you. 
Yeah, I just want to play someone mean. Like, yes. I really have always wanted to play someone mean. And I played Sharpay in high school, and I did not do a good job of it, so I really want to redeem myself. So. <laughs> I'd be so down. I was too afraid to be, like, vicious, you know? Yeah. So I really want to just cut people with my words. I haven't seen it live yet, but hopefully as soon as everything comes back, I will be yes. able to. You yeah. will. Yeah. It's a great show. I haven't seen it live either, but I really want to play with you. Music is fantastic. Yes, and it's great. I also saw Cosette on your resume, too. Have you ever auditioned for that in another production? Yeah, so I've actually played Little Cosette and Big Cosette, so that's fun. Um, I was pretty devastated I didn't get Eponine, not gonna lie, but it's okay. It's my high school show, and I got to play Cosette, and life goes on, and I actually am very, I had so much fun since life goes on. But I have auditioned for, I auditioned for the tour once, like right out of college, and actually it was like one of those weird experiences where I, like it was the EPA that I went to, which is the equity principal audition, which is another open call for equity members if they don't get an appointment for a show and I went in and I sang now that I've seen her and I was I was not confident back then this was like right out of college and it, college kind of showed my confidence because like you know you're competing with all these really good kids and it's just it's a lot um so I hadn't really built back up my confidence yet in my voice and so I was just not I was hitting the notes whenever but like now I'm like, girl, you could have done way better that with, with all that. But I just was, like, too nervous to, like, really, like, let it out there, you know? And um, and he kept, like, having me sing the song over again. And then he had me sing a soprano song. And then he was like, you're great. And you would be great in this show. But, like, you've got to work on your confidence. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I uh, obviously did not get called back. But um, I think I did well, regardless. Uh, and I... I I do think like I also looked very young at the time and I do I look a lot younger than I am and so that also probably had something to do with it because uh, a lot of times I've been told I just look too young um so yeah that was that was definitely I wanted it but I didn't get it but I auditioned for it I think I did well but it didn't happen <laughs> so I, I was gonna say I could see you I was gonna say I could see you uh playing it on the tour or something that would be wonderful. Um, I know my friend Abby is, she did this concert in San Francisco and like one of her main requests was that I sing on my own. So I did that for her and I was very happy to do it. Um, is that online anywhere? It is. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a trio. So it's on my own with um, Taylor Quick and Matt Rizal. And Matt Rizal was actually uh, the like merriest standby on the tour. Oh. And on Broadway. So, like, and actually, I think he oddly is the poster Marius. So, it's like he's, he like is the Marius in the poster for the, the, like, that revival. So funny. He's also like one of my favorite people. He's a Dimitri understudy as well. And he, he was Marius and I was Eponine and she was Cassette. And it was basically I was singing on my own and they were like Marius and Cassette being like, what the hell is wrong with this girl? <laughs> in our own little world so it's it's funny but um for me I was just saying an epony I was just being epony whereas like they're doing the, the humor so but it's so all I get to be epony <laughs> like, in my in my mind I was just epony and that's all I cared about <laughs> yes epony's my favorite too so good choice yeah. um what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on stage during a performance light it stuff up <laughs> Well, I fell in the big red dress at the end of the show, so that would probably be it, and I couldn't get up because it was just so big, and my, quite frankly, my boob had popped out, and I was trying to get it back in because I didn't want to flash anyone in the audience, and uh, Steven was like, I, like, didn't know what to do, and, like, I remember I, like, I, like, he's had to help me get up, and his mic is hot, and he goes, are you okay? And I was like, he goes, okay, bye. And, like, that's not our lines. Our lines are, like, completely not that. And the music is still going, and my music director's, like, in the monitor, like, what's going on? Like, why are they not saying their dialogue, you know? Yeah. That's, that was probably the funniest one. There's someone looking at the script backstage going, what? <laughs> oh, no, they were all, like, they all saw that I fell on the monitors. They were all, like, oh. You know, I'm in this giant dress, and just, I was laughing the entire time. I just, I'm not, I really don't take myself very seriously, which is great, but also bad. 
And in moments like that, it's great because I was just like, oh, well, here we go. And like so many people at the end of the show were like, were you okay? And it was like, I have a lot of padding on. I'm, I'm all good. Don't you worry. But like, well, we saw you throbbing on the floor. I was like, that was me putting my boob back in. But, <laughs> But I, I feel no, I'm good. Good. I'm like, I really appreciate it, but I'm totally fine. I was like, let's, let's move forward. <laughs> so that would probably be it. I mean, I fell a lot. I fell a lot and I dropped things a lot, but um, that's just because I'm clumsy. So I'm, I fell in my Broadway debut. It's just like something that I do. So I just like don't try to like linger on it, I guess. But it's a normal person thing. It's like People funny fall. to talk about. I'm like, oh yeah, I totally like butt planted in my Broadway yeah. debut and people are like on your bra like during your Broadway debut I was like oh yeah yeah like dead center stage just <laughs> wind knocked out of me so it oh, happens oh. yeah stuff right. happens life goes on is the it's dress funny. heavy my yeah. bread dress is 35 pounds so it's okay. fair I, yeah. yeah I would be falling in that thing all the time then. I only fell in that dress once but it was an epic fall so yeah what so. to talk about Yes. So, and um, if quarantine wasn't a thing right now, kind of fun questions, like hard questions. Uh, <laughs> where would your dream vacation be? Uh, I'm like weird. So I have two modes. There's like travel mode, and then there's vacation mode. So like, if we're talking like relaxing, it would be Hawaii. If we're talking like traveling, it would be Paris. Oh. Cause like, yes. I want to like go and sit on a beach and like zip line and stuff. That's like fun and like whatever. But I also like want to like go to the Eiffel Tower and like eat bread in Paris. So my friends and I are actually planning a cross country trip in an RV right now. So that'll be Ooh. fun. Um, cause I don't have much to do and she doesn't work yeah. more than like two hours a day. So, and she works remotely. So we can take my puppy. So that's gonna be great. Yeah. That's a blast. Then you don't have to get on an airplane and worry about having to wear to wear masks the whole time on the airplane and so many of my yeah. friends are kind of scattered across the u.s right now because most of my friends who weren't originally from new york like i am have left yeah uh you know so i have so many people that i can visit which is great yeah that's so much fun that's a good idea um and what's the first thing you're going to do once quarantine ends hopefully go to an audition, hopefully have an appointment, um, uh, you know, can do most of the other things that I used to do, so, uh, that would be nice. Yes. <laughs> I just really like to, like, sing it again in front of people. That would be really nice. Um, you know, don't, I don't see that happening anytime soon, so that's okay. Uh, that would probably, or that, or, like, go see my grandma honestly. I've seen her since quarantine started, and we've just been at a safe distance, but it'd be nice to give her a hug. Yeah. So. And, uh, and uh, if you could revive anything on Broadway, besides Anastasia, obviously, what would it be? <laughs> uh, I actually would really love for there to be a revival of Parade. I would love to be in Parade. Um, so that's like, and I think it's actually very relevant right now. So I think that there's like definitely, uh, maybe I should just do that. I should produce a revival of Parade. That's what I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's my show. That's the show that I want to see come back. Or produce a revival of Anastasia because both productions closed too Partially. early. Yes, I would agree. I, I don't understand how, but... I guess you know, that's the thing. The thing about theater is it's, uh, to be honest, like Anastasia is very lucky to have had as long of a run as it did. A lot of shows don't make it past like a year. So to me, I just feel like, you know, you have to really embrace the moments that you get because like there really is no rhyme or reason to like when things like successful shows sometimes close because it's just like, that's just the way it is. And so it, it definitely is sad that that's how it works but it's also like just appreciate the time you had with it you know it's hard yeah. it's a hard one I was I remember I was so devastated when Mary Poppins closed and that was a six-year long run so <laughs> so you know it's not like there's no rhyme or reason to it and you just kind of like embrace them when they're here and support theater and yeah hopefully things come back but I, I just 
there's certain shows that I feel like people need to see more of around the world, and Anastasia is obviously one of them. And luckily, Anastasia will be coming back on tour, just not our tour, so yeah. people will still That's get true. to see it. That's true. They're doing a, it, are they doing it uh, non act Yes, it'll be like the second national tour is going to be uh, non-ec, and I believe they're planning on launching at some time in 2021. That's really all I know. A lot of people ask me about it, but I'm, I'm just I'm not affiliated with it in any way, yeah. so I can't really say anything else other than I know that it's happening and it's going to be in 2021. Um, so I'm excited to see like what it's going to look like and who's going to be in it and stuff. So, Ooh, at least they're bringing it back in some aspect. Yes, I think that that's, like, great that it's going to come back. That's all that really matters. Hopefully they can bring back uh, Crossing the Bridge. In it. That will not happen. <laughs> I would love that. I will that. say, if that's just not, it's, they, they've removed it from all productions of Anastasia, and I think had Christy ever left Broadway, they probably would have removed it whenever the next oh, person okay. came in. That's just because it's just, was, it's a long-running show, and they needed to cut down on the time. It's kind such like a gorgeous that. song, though. I just don't want to get anyone home anyone's hopes up like it's, it's yeah. not in the show anymore so kind of like what happened with Frozen and True Love <laughs> exactly it's just it's like one of those things where uh it even happened in Mary Poppins they rewrote some of the songs too after the original Mary and Bert left so it, it does it does happen and it's always so devastating when it does honestly because you just get so attached to the songs and I always was like sad a little bit that I didn't get to sing it but it's okay like life goes on <laughs> so there's a video of you online singing it right? I did sing it yeah I've sung it a couple of times for people's benefits they would ask me to come in and they'd be like can you sing something from Anastasia and I'd be like sure what do you want me to sing and they'd be like either journey or crossing a bridge because it's not in the show and I'd be like let's do crossing a bridge because I don't sing it every day yeah you know, so, and, I, and I loved that song it's a great song yeah so it would be nice awesome. if it was in the show but. yeah it's a beautiful <laughs> song it's um gorgeous. and Going back to a deep question, what do you think life theater will be like when it does eventually come back? You know, I think it's going to be different. I think it's definitely going to be less audience members when it first comes back, um, just because of safety precautions. But I hope that over time, like, I can only really like think about the immediate future, so I don't see it being the same, but I think over time, hopefully it'll get back to the way it used to be in certain ways. I think that also right now is a great opportunity for people in live theater who are in the more like the production side to really take a kind of hard look at the voices that have been left out of live theater. So, you know, transgender voices, black voices, um, any POC really. Asian voices have been left out, Hispanic voices have been left out. So to really like bring those voices to the forefront would be lovely. Uh, also more women. I would, I would like to see more women in theater. I think that oftentimes people think, oh, because there are lots of women who pursue theater, there's lots of roles for women and there's actually not. Um, there's a lot more out there for men. And it would be nice to, I would also be nice to see women taking on men roles. I would love to see a woman play one of the leads in Hamilton. I think that that would be fantastic. And I think that that could definitely be done. So I hope that that well, could yeah. happen at some point. Um, stuff like that. So I hope that like in this time, those things can change because this is the perfect opportunity to like kind of brainstorm what can be produced and put those people, like women, people of color, gay, transgender, whatever, that would be, a, this is a great time to put them at the forefront of uh, what we're producing and what we're creating. So that would be lovely. And I would also think, I think it would be lovely to really work on this whole show must go on attitude. It's just really unhealthy and it's not fair to performers or people backstage. Most, most crews don't have substitutes and they have to work every night, whether they're sick or not. And I would love to see that change because I just think that it's just unreasonable to expect people to push through anything and everything, you know? Uh, so yeah. hoping, those are the things I, I want to see change and I'm optimistic that they will. Because I think theater has always been kind of ahead of the curve in terms of like how we operate. And so I would love to see us set a precedent for the rest of the country and show other people how it's done and like really do it the right way and like that would be lovely so that's that's my hope um yeah but i don't, I don't know if that'll work or not. i i it's hard for me to make any guesses <laughs> so. 
do you think or want virtual theater to stick around after everything gets back to normal? I think virtual theater is great. I kind of have been wondering why we haven't done like a live musical yet. I, I get sometimes frustrated because I feel like we're making all these like, we're bending over backwards to get sports back, um, which is kind of like a similar industry in terms of like ticket sales and what have you. And I think like yeah, obviously the athletes touch each other. So like if they can, if we can figure out how to make those things come back, why can't we do like a, a Grease Live or like a, I would love to see that happen more. I actually, I actually want more of it. I don't want less of it. I want yeah. more of it. And I want it. I also would really love if they would cast people who are in live theater to do these things. Not that I don't think that, I think lots of people are talented and what have you, but there's a specific skill set that comes with doing live theater that a lot of us work very, very hard to maintain. And it would be nice to see people who are in live theater actually have a shot at doing what we do eight times a week for a larger audience. Yeah. That would be nice. So it would be nice if those things would start happening more actually. Um, that's my two cents on that. <laughs> no, I agree. It's sort of the people who you see on TV and you already know their names and everyone, they're already household names. It's like, give someone else a chance to get on TV and be a, be a star and be talked about in someone's yeah. house. And like, well, it's, it's also, it, for me, it's also just like, we work so hard to do things like maintain our voice and sing properly. And like, and you know, it's, there are so many talented people who can sing, but it's like, as a trained singer, I can hear them struggling, or I can hear them, and, it, and that can be frustrating to me sometimes, because I'm like, I spend so much time literally making sure that I can, like, I, it's just one of those things where I feel like live theater actors don't usually get a chance to do what they do every night on a larger scale, and so that, it would just be nice to see not even, I'm not even just speaking for myself. It would just like, be, like, be really great to see like Audrey McDonald headline a NBC live musical. I yeah. think that that would be wonderful. So yeah, hopefully it'll agree. happen. I agree. Y'all deserve that. So uh, lastly, have you been working on anything in quarantine, whether it's crafting or singing related that you'd want to promote? I wish, but I have been completely and utterly bored during this quarantine. Um, I am not the best at creating things. I am very, very good at like helping others, but I'm not good at doing that. Um, so I've been doing a lot of cleaning. I've been doing a lot of like Marie Kondoing and um, doing a lot of self-reflection actually. For me, I actually had like a major life transition in October of 2019 um, that Truthfully, I've actually just had to focus on dealing with the, those things um, and like kind of reworking my life as I knew it. Um, and I'm finally kind of like at that point where like I, I have a better handle on that. So like actually I've been working a lot more on myself rather than like crafts or like creativity because I just really needed to do that. Um, so I guess this time has actually been very like valuable for those things. But no, I've been watching like Glee and I've been trying to keep in touch with my friends and taking a lot of walks in nature, uh, but not, not a lot of creative projects. I'm kind of like at that point where now that I've kind of dealt with a lot of my life transition from the year prior, uh, I'm kind of at this point where I'm like, okay, now I would like to get creative again. So we'll see if maybe things start popping up, but. But I like that. They but yeah, no, I, then the other thing is I was working for so long, like, with nonstop that I missed out on a lot of time with my friends and family. So it's been great to just kind of spend this time with them, um, you know, and, and enjoy the time off. Um, as a workaholic, it's hard for me to enjoy time off. So, you know, those things are definitely things that I've just been trying to not take for granted. Yeah, that's important. And that's something a lot of people who hopefully watch this will need to hear that like, you don't have to be working on something all the time to, no. to get something out of quarantine. You can be working on you. Well, and I think that's when quarantine started, a lot of us were like, I'm gonna learn guitar, I'm gonna learn how to play piano, I'm gonna write music, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna come out with something great. And it 
I personally started feeling like all this pressure to be like doing all the things during quarantine. Yeah. And I just, my headspace was not there. I was not in a good place when, when everything ended, I was in a terrible place mentally. Um, just, I had gone through a, a major breakup and I was really, truly not in the mood to create something great for other people. I was just like, this is not, I, 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 I can't do this right now. And I was starting to feel guilty that I wasn't trying to create for other people. And then it just took me a minute to be like, ah, you know what? I love that y'all are doing this and like kudos to you, but I'm going to burn out if I don't take some time to just, I actually like got rid of my phone for like a week. I didn't talk to anyone. It caused a lot of my friends great dilemma. I apologize, friends. <laughs> I told you I was taking my phone away from you. Like I literally had like nine messages. I told one friend that I was going off the grid for a week and it was Kenny. If you've been following me, you know that he's my best friend for the tour. So I called him and I was like, I'm, I'm control. I'm, uh, I literally like locked my phone in a, a, a in a room and just didn't touch it for a week. Um, I was also in Florida with my parents at the time, so I didn't, I didn't really know anyone in Florida calling me. It wasn't like I was going to go see them or hang out with them. I was very much so literally alone. Um, so that made it a little bit easier to just be like, it's not like there's anything urgent for me to attend to. And, uh, and yeah, and he, he, he was funny. One of my, uh, one of my best friends in the world, Sarah, calls Kenny and was like, I haven't been able to get in touch with Lila. I don't know what's going on. Is she okay? And Kenny was like, she got rid of her phone for a week. Like, she'll be back. And Sarah was like, the next time you do something like that, you have to tell me. And I was like, okay, I got it. So like, you know, I think I just, I just think this is an unprecedented time. And if you're not feeling creative, you don't have to force it. Like, don't force yourself to feel like you have to do something in a time where like, none of us know how to deal with this. This is completely new to everyone. So Yes. And I'm, and I'm sure your dog has helped a lot. He's this right time. here. Let me get her. Come here, Paisley. Aw. Come here. She's, Aww. Aww. she's sleepy. Hello, cutie. She <laughs> used to be four pounds, and now she's 15. Oh, oh she's so cute. Yeah, my dog was through the first couple months of this. So when I was yeah. alone in California in my apartment, and I was yeah. like, gonna yeah I'm gonna go crazy. yeah well that's the thing too is I was I had wanted a dog for a while and um oh, and uh I really wanted a corgi I think if anyone knows me they know that I'm very obsessed with corgis and uh sh I just was like I just decided one day to get her <laughs> much to my parents dismay actually not my mother my mother was like oh yeah my dad was like what a dog <laughs> but uh she's been the best thing and she's so pretty. <laughs> she's she's gonna start biting me. She's still teething. Oh, oh she's so cute. Um, but she she's been the best part of this quarantine, and I got her in May, uh, so like a couple months in, and um, she was four pounds when I got her. She's a full ten pounds bigger, and she's just great. She's great. Okay, I'm gonna scratch me. You gonna look at my ear? Oh, oh my and they're all unconditionally. They're yeah. yeah. Good decision. Good decision. Yeah. Best decision I've ever made in my life. Plus, I don't think so. I would ever have this much time to take care of a dog ever again. So, <laughs> so you get, bond. you get to bond. Yeah. Well, I'm very thankful I'm getting to do this now because I, if I was still on the road, there's no way. <laughs> she's a lot of work. So she's a baby. She literally doesn't know left from right. So, yeah. But she's super quiet. My dog wouldn't be barking up a storm in, the, in here. You just caught her after her zoomies. So. <laughs> She's usually, well, she's not a big barker, but she's usually very needy. Like, she likes to bite things, and she's still teething and losing her teeth, and it's, she's, just a, she's just a little goon, so. And I was going to ask, uh, for future projects, anything, or just to keep up with what you're doing in quarantine, and any advice, inspiration, where can people follow you on social media? I literally only have Instagram. <laughs> I know everyone keeps telling me to make a TikTok and I'm actually at the point where I'm considering it. I don't know. I just like sometimes feel like, what am I going to tell people that I have a TikTok? But Reels exist like now. Huh? Reels on Instagram. I will. And now TikTok's being banned. So I think like Reels is where it's going to be. Yeah. Um, LOL. Uh, here we are, 2020. Um, Crazy. But, uh, 
But yeah, you can follow me on uh, Instagram. It's at Lil Coog, so L-I-L-C-O-O-G-S. Um, you can also follow Paisley's Instagram if you wanted. She's got one. It's Paisley Coog, so the word Paisley and then C-O-O-G-S at the end. Um, I was going to ask <laughs> Yes, she's, she, I didn't want to bombard, like, all the people that follow me for theater and for Anastasia with my puppy photos, so I figured I should have to, like, just make her her own. Um, well, my dog will follow her, so. Oh, great. Dreams. <laughs> yeah. She'll follow back. <laughs> So, yep. Fantastic. Well, it's been nice chatting with you. Yes, yeah, lovely chatting with you too. Best of luck with the rest of the podcast and all your other Thank interviews. You. Thank you. I love this thing. I get to talk about theater with people again, and it's been great. It's been so fun. Yeah, it's awesome. And I'm glad it worked out with the power. <laughs> yes, I'm glad your power came back too. I was very concerned. I was like waiting until the last minute because I was hoping it would come back on because they kept saying, oh, Saturday. Oh, they were like, oh, Friday. Oh, Saturday. And then yesterday we're like, oh, it's not coming back till Tuesday. And I was like, oh, God. I was like, so that's when I messaged you like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it tomorrow. And then literally minutes after messaging you, it was like, whoop, power came back on. And I was like, okay, I can do it. <laughs> so, and that happens. Like, it's the weirdest thing. It things like that always happen. What I'm saying about the universe is when you want something so badly, it can take, the universe will be like, you need to like have some patience and grace. And like yesterday I had just basically been like, I'm just accepting that it's not happening. I'm not gonna have power ever again. And then literally that's when the power came back on. So who knows? They were like, the universe said here. <laughs> I, think that, I think it's one of those things where like, I'm not very religious, but I am very spiritual. And I definitely think that the universe doesn't like it when you're holding so tightly to something and they, it wants you to like want it, but want it for the right reasons. And yes. I was at that point where it's like, I just would like it for hot water and that's it. I don't, I don't need anything else. And then <laughs> that's when it came back up. So. Well, do you cook and stuff? Do you, are you like- I'm a, I'm a big cook and we did not have any, we had our fridge because our lovely gracious neighbor let us put an extension cord from her outdoor deck to our fridge. So we, our food didn't go bad, but we only had the grill because we don't have any gas in our house, which is why our hot water didn't work either. So I was suffering because I primarily do most of the cooking in this house and I didn't have a proper kitchen and it was not fun for me. So you were like, oh my God, I need to cook. <laughs> yes, I was very much so like, well, I was actually, it's just, it was too difficult and I would just throw in the towel and eat out all the time, which is not, I don't love eating out all the time. I get, to, I kind of feel gross. Yeah. So, I mean, the food's great. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. I get grossed out after a while. So, and it's a difficult time to go eat out right now. But. Yeah, and like yeah, ordering in, you kind of, I just felt like very lazy because it wasn't. I couldn't do much. I was like, one of the big things that I do during quarantine is cook. That's like why I like to do it because it makes me feel like I'm doing something, and uh, not having that was no fun. Yeah. So, thanks for watching this episode of Backstage with Becca B. You can follow me on. Twitter and Instagram at Becca B Talks TV. Or for more exclusive content from this interview and more, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Backstage with Becca B. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!